this is our shower. It's an open air shower and uh, a we get visitors. The local wildlife is having a bath too. <laughs> it's their personal pool. We mm. saved the water. This guy is still alive. He's just enjoying the little twist around. And Helen is going to try and move him out of the pot now. Hopefully we're not screaming. You won't like this? No, he's going to get thrown out of his personal Be careful, pool. they can spray him on the, from the we, back legs. We, yeah, no, Just put we, the broom underneath. Yeah, and We saved this water for our, for our plants, mm. but he's using it as a personal pool. So, mm. you ready? It, just mm. push him into the bushes. You don't need to, if I can. Come on. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, that was a nasty sound. He's still there, though. Give him a, like, a bit of a button, ass rub. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. He won't go out now. It's too hot. Mm. He'll stay in the pool. Yeah, okay. There, there it's okay. We have a little baby lizard again here that is uh, eating our plants apparently. He is now resting because he's too full with whatever he was chomping away at. Life is hard here. It's only the second time. Meat? That we have meat, yeah. We have wow. a chorizo sausage mm -hmm. and it's super yummy. We have discovered them. with um, small potatoes that we fried in the frying pan. We, we boiled them first and then we fried them again. And we have broccoli and cauliflower with mm. butter and sour cream. Life is good here. Tastes really, really good. So I'm just going to take a quick photo and then I'm going to dive into mm -hmm. our food. You can go ahead. Thank you. Very good. Very healthy. Well, we don't have to ration anymore because we were really worried at the start that we weren't going to get much food, so mm. we had to keep you know, on, on what we got. But no, it's not. Well, nice. Now that we can go into town to buy our own stuff, yeah. we get more and more creative. This is true. That wasn't the case at the start. It no. was at least four or five weeks where we couldn't go in yeah. until we, we finally managed to go. And now in. we find out what Once we can get here. Mm -hmm. No more rationing because we have lots of cho chocolate. Oh, yes. The only thing we keep up is uh, using less toilet paper. <laughs> we got used to that. Yes, we count pieces. Bon appetit. Mm -hmm. Bon provecho. Mm -hmm. Guten appetit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Enjoy the meal. Mm -hmm. So, this is our daily breakfast. Well, lunch basically. Today it is because we weren't. Uh, we didn't get to bed. Until We're going to have apples, a nice orange, mm. bananas. Do we still have some blueberries left? We have blueberries. They're already washed. And we already and have bananas. pineapple in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So Helen is usually the one who peacefully cuts everything away mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. I'm usually the one who eats it peacefully <laughs> afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now we usually take it in turns, but well, lately Helen has lately. done a lot because I still have everything. to water my plants outside yeah. and stuff like this. You're being farmer Kirsten, and I, I'm, I'm farmer Kirsten in the all the, the household stuff. Mm -hmm. Good teamwork as mm -hmm. always. Bananas is something we get in Colombia really, really cheap. Mm, we pay about a yeah. dollar for a docena, which is like 12 large bananas. Mm, we've got the little ones at the moment. At the moment we have the apple bananas. Mm -hmm. They're kind of nice too. Mm. A little bit more firm. And uh, they grow in Colombia like crazy, usually down at the coast. Where it's wetter. Where it's wetter because they need a lot of water to mm, grow. They really do need a lot of water. They're like avocados. And at the moment, uh, at least up here in the mountains, we have a drought. Uh, the rainy season is still not, not still. on. And if it rains, it's not raining enough. So we shouldn't really eat bananas, but they are 
probably anyway from the coast, I they would are. think. They are. And the oranges we fillet here. Helen is always using a large bread knife, mm -hmm. but it works well. I use that for the pineapple actually. Yeah, I like it. Because um, they have big skins here, but they're very juicy and very flashy. They would be actually super for um, juice oranges as well. Yeah, but we like it. But we like it filleted in our fruit salad. Mm -hmm. with just a touch of juice mixed up with our yogurt mm -hmm. or at least I have it with the yogurt mixed up makes for nice compost as well mm -hmm. we gather a large bucket of kitchen scraps every day Sometimes they have a lot of seeds and sometimes they have no seeds at all. This oh, one is one. This one's without. Without. But they're always mixed. Yeah. And this is what it looks like <laughs> with pineapple and blueberry on top. I'm going to add my muesli now and yogurt, and Helen eats it separately. This is what we have every morning very, very healthy and with lots of nutrition. This is a large horn beetle. He's about two inches, about four or five centimeters big. I'm not sure if he's still alive, actually. We're doing our rounds. It's very hot today. It's the 25th of May. And it's very hot. We were very slow today. <laughs> I did actually take the camera with me to take yeah. some photos of snake. Um, snakes are marvelous. Yeah. This is our that I do daily. Helen's yeah, doing 500 kilometers. Wow. You think I'm the lazy one, but I am. No. no I usually do some other things, but I haven't been doing much lately. It's too hot for me. Yeah, today's hot. This is usually the bit Helen is running, yeah. but it's way too hot today. This is a bit of a down, downhill thing. And in the distance you see the trough, it's empty, too dry, not for us anyway, it's for the cows. And then after that, we have to go up again. Good exercise. And it's looking for the mot mot. So this is the little stretch we have to go back up. Uh, this is the turn off. Mm -hmm. To the left you go up the hill to get to Barichara. And, uh, and to the right, it's the small town of Guana, which we haven't seen because we're still in the lockdown. Mm -hmm. But we attempt to do it one day. This is the steep downhill. It's really good. We do something for our calves, for our glutes, for our hamstrings. What are the other nasty terms? Then we have to climb the wall. The dogs do it so easily on their forefeet. Helen is showing off. You gotta be really careful here because you need to put your feet correctly on the rocks here and you've got to hold on with your hands. Oof. This is hard on the knees. There we go. So I made Kirsten go back so she has to do the wall again because we've got to film her coming out really well. We actually have two walls to climb. This is the tough part now. <laughs> yep, gotta go all the way uphill. Do about eight of these rounds, you've done between eight and nine kilometers. If you do this eight rounds, 
or 10 or 12, Helen usually does a lot more, then you're quite exhausted. Normally we see snakes or something like this here. Helen always sees snakes. Now that I've got the camera, nothing. Ah, there's Yuya, eh, Yuya, Kira. <laughs> Keep going. And now we're back to the path that is leveled with the campground. Here's the other. Time. This is what we usually take that path to go into town. This is the termite mound that we always have to get past. This is where Helen Lee sees lots of snakes, usually. Another sporty one. Sometimes this big tarantula is in there. You can tell Helen has done that hundreds of times by now and we're going to do it probably thousands more times by the time we actually leave here, whenever that will be. Brazil is now the new hotspot for the coronavirus, so we're getting a bit concerned. More than a thousand virus-related daily deaths have been recorded in Brazil, making it the worst-hit country in South America. More than 270,000 people are infected, and it places it behind only the US and Russia. European Union tourism ministers have failed to reach common agreement on reopening borders as concerns grow about the economic impact of prolonged closure. Several member states called for increased financial support for the tourism sector. In Afghanistan, the UN is warning of rising numbers of civilian casualties from conflict at the same time as the country's hospitals are struggling to deal with the rapid spread of the coronavirus epidemic. China's political leaders are attending the National People's Congress in Beijing. This was due to take place in March, was postponed because of the coronavirus pandemic. One controversial new security law for Hong Kong is expected to be voted through. Pro-democracy activists and politicians in Hong Kong have taken to the streets. They say that this new law could mean the end of the region's autonomy. The legislation could see demonstrators charged with treason. A team of UK scientists think they've identified a coronavirus treatment using cells from our own bone marrow to fight the virus. A new study has found that an anti-malarial drug promoted by the US president to treat COVID-19 may increase the risk of deaths among infected patients. Donald Trump is himself taking hydro hydroxychloroquine. British Prime Minister's closest aide, Dominic Cummings, is facing further allegations that he breached lockdown rules. The government insists he acted reasonably and legally by driving over 250 miles from home while his wife had coronavirus. A large fire has engulfed parts of the popular Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. The area is closed due to a coronavirus lockdown, but there are fears for homeless people who use the building. A meeting of the British Cabinet today to discuss the relaxing of lockdown measures is being overshadowed by calls for the Prime Minister's chief adviser to resign for breaking coronavirus restrictions. Ministers say Boris Johnson's defence of Dominic Cummings undermines the government's message. Greece is reopening its islands to domestic tourists today in the latest move towards ending its lockdown restrictions. But most international flights won't resume until the middle of June. Brazil's coronavirus death toll is continuing to rise. 
The US has imposed travel restrictions on foreign nationals who have been to Brazil in the last 14 days. As the number of people who've died from the virus in the US nears 100,000, there's concern over the possible consequences of Americans not obeying the social distancing rules that have been reinforced as the country eases out of lockdown. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he regrets the confusion and anger caused by his chief advisor's long journeys across the UK during the antivirus lockdown. But he's reiterated his support for Dominic Cummings, who's insisted he didn't violate the rules and doesn't regret what he did. Brazil has recorded the world's highest number of deaths from COVID-19 in a single day. The latest figure, 807. Only the United States has more cases in total, but Brazil's official figures are thought to be very much underestimated. President Bolsonaro is still refusing to implement a national lockdown. Stay tuned for more videos.